good morning to all of you. First of all, I'm extremely sorry for not being able to post my video for a long time. So my sincere apologies. I know a lot of people were waiting for my new videos. I was getting a lot of requests, but my sincere apology was not being able to make it. The reason I was not able to interact with all of you, I was just busy with creating something very unique. So I am forming uh, some certifications under the banner of Global Association of Forensic Accountants, short GAFA. I will be talking about GAFA, its offering in terms of fin crime field, anti-money laundering, cybersecurity, and fraud investigation in next few videos. But today, as promised, I'm here once again to deal with your camps related topics. So guys, me Kamaljit Kaur Soni, once again here to deal with and help you out with some more topics related to CAMS exam preparation. It's been a while that we have connected, but I'm sure your preparation is going really well. So let's start today a topic, which is quite an important topic for examination. If you talk about any examination for anti-money laundering, one question which is almost short short is asking about Financial Action Task Force, which is also known as FATF. So today we will be talking about Financial Action Task Force. So today, Let's talk about FATF, Financial Action Task Force. This is something which is very well tested in examination. And also if you are talking about a course like CAMS or any other AML exam, it's very important for us to understand what role FATF plays when it comes to dealing with money laundering, terror funding, and proliferation financing all over the world. So today let's understand what role Financial Action Task Force or FATF plays when it comes to anti-money laundering. FATF is a global watchdog, a very strong body, I would say, which supports the entire globe in tackling with a serious crime like money laundering, terror funding, and proliferation of financing. Financial Asia Task Force came into light back in 1989 in G7 Summit. Today, it has about 40 members. In 23, Russia was removed from the list. So we have 39 members of Financial Action Task Force who are strongly supporting the recommendations of FATF. Along with the member countries, Financial Action Task Force makes sure that all the countries have very strong laws, technically, and very effective implementation of all the laws regulation related to AML and CFT. As we have already discussed, money laundering and terror funding is a very, very serious crime. It is not just about money. It is much more and much beyond that. So the objective of having FATF is to combat money laundering with the support of all countries who are member and those countries who are not member of FATF, they still have bodies called the factive style regional bodies. These bodies may not be member of FATF. However, they are still supporting in spreading the awareness about AML and CFT worldwide. So let's talk about how FATF plays that prominent role. Before we move on and discuss more about FATF's role, Please note that this topic is 
quite an important topic for examination. So when you prepare for your exam, please prepare it really well. FATF originally had 40 member countries, if you look at FATF's website. However, in 23, Russia was removed. And today we have 39 full members, which include 37 countries and two regional organizations, which includes European Commission and GCC. So in total, we have 39 members, 37 plus two. So one thing which you have to keep in mind, how many member countries are there? Then probably your book will also discuss how will FATF decide what countries should be admitted as member or how do they select the member or what is the eligibility criteria for membership? So there are some quantitative as well as qualitative factors. The quantitative factor may include the size of country, their population, their GDP, uh, the size of banking, insurance and security market. The qualitative would be what is the impact of that country on the world? So these are few quantitative as well as qualitative factor basis which FATF decide the membership. If countries are not part of FATF as a member, it does not mean that they should not be worrying about AML or CFT. So FATF has nine FSRBs, FATF style regional bodies. In short, we call it FSRBs. There are nine. These are these make sure that they will spread the word of FATF in the world. Even those countries who may not be member of FATF, they still should follow the AML and CFT recommendation given by FATF. Here it is very important for us to note down whether FATF's recommendations are mandatory to be followed or it is like a framework. So FATF provides the recommendation which works like a broad framework. When I say framework, that means one size does not fit all. Every country is different. Their laws, their regulation, their geographies, the population, everything is different. So is their banking, insurance, and securities. Their money businesses may vary. And that is where FATF says that our recommendation should be adopted in the circumstances where the countries live in. So they can always customize as per the need of the country. So FATF provides framework, correct? So that's another point which is important for us to memorize and understand. So, so far, we understood how FATF came into picture. We understood how many members FATF has. And we also understand what is FSRB. These are name of FATF member countries. Though in examination, it's not very frequent to ask the name of the country, but it is always good to have a knowledge if you are studying AML, you should certainly know about these facts. Then these are name of FATF style regional bodies. So as you can see, it is spread everywhere. Then these FSRB will go and speak to their own members, which will be 200 odd countries. Even though they are not direct member of FATF, they still have to follow the recommendation of FATF. The question comes to your mind that why should country follow? Country should follow because it is not just in the interest of any specific country or specific body. It is good for all the countries. Which country will get benefited from money laundering? Or which country will get benefited from terror funding? None. Terrorism is not a problem of a country. Terrorism is a problem of word. That is why 
FATF gives a strong recommendation and strong actions are taken against those countries who are non cooperative not all kids are good so is the countries some kids are too good they understand what fatf says however there are some naughty kids around and we call them non cooperative members or non cooperative countries i would say non cooperative member may not be the right term so my apology let's put it as non cooperative countries now let me explain the concept how fatf you know really work and make sure the countries listen to them talk about fatf's gray listing and black listing so one of my favorite way to describe this in a very simpler term and very layman term is when we were growing up as a teenager there may be a lot of chances where you know our parents wanted us to do something and we were like too naughty to follow that and then suppose you know your parents have given you a warning that don't do this this is wrong don't do this this is wrong some kids will be good they will listen to the parents correct the mistakes and come out as cleaner however there may be certain naughty kids who will say nothing doing i am not going to listen to them then what parents used to do parent used to block your cards block the financing now do whatever you want to do you will not get any pocket money no credit cards nothing now let me try and convert that basic example to gray listing and black listing this is just for reference purpose and understanding purpose so fatf reviews countries time to time they have technical reviews as well as effective reviews of countries if fatf realizes that countries current laws regulation or the implementation of aml may not be as per standards or it has lot of loopholes or weaknesses those country will be put in in the list called gray listing gray listing is like i'm watching you so fatf time to time review the countries and put them in a list and say hey your current aml cft process are not at particular standard it's time for you to amend it the good countries will listen to fatf will amend all their laws regulation and will make sure the country comes out of gray listing soon so gray listing countries are those countries which are under review and fatf and the members are watching them closely but as i said not all countries are that good some says nothing doing we will not have a strong aml cft compliances or it may also possible that those country may be supporting money laundering or terror funding in some or other manner not acceptable then those naughty kids are put in in the black list and that's called fats black listing so black listing means those country will be put in in a high risk country and all the banks worldwide will be very cautious with dealing with those people who belong to high risk countries so far there are three countries which are put in in the black list iran myanmar and north korea these three countries are part of black listing apart from that there are many list many many countries which are there in the gray list however some countries are out of gray listing when they implemented a very strong aml process in the country so it's up to the country from gray list they want to go and go into black listing or they have an option to move out of gray list and become a cleaner country 
the question which comes to our mind is what will happen if i will become blacklist what did i say what if you do not listen to your parent your finances are cut to begin with and then of course there will be sanctions there will be lot of punishments so similarly the countries which are blacklisted will not get financial support from un imf or other countries they may also get into severe sanctions countries exports will be restricted other countries who are supporting aml and cft may not like to deal with those countries much overall it's very strict arm twisting why fatf does it because that's the only way through which they can make them a good child the country has to have a strong aml cft process in place and if they don't have it they should be definitely punished for it so that is the concept of gray listing and black listing i'm sure with this basic example you would have understood it and it's not something which you will be forgetting soon now mark it as important for examination when you prepare for your exam do study about gray listing and black listing as well so as we discussed what happens if the country becomes blacklist there will be public statement why fatf publish the list of gray list and blacklist country for two reason one once their names are published they get some pressure on them because everybody is watching them second worldwide the financial institution will be careful dealing with those countries or those nationals or those companies who may belong to high risk countries that's the reason fatf make that public then there will be increased scrutiny economic consequences as we discussed financial pressure you know a lot of restrictions on exports of course reputational damage if a country gets into blacklisting it's not a great thing for them then pressure to reform there is always a scope of improvement just because a country has come into blacklist it does not mean they can never come out of it if they really want they can come out of it very very soon that is where the listing gray listing and black listing of fatf puts pressure on the country to have strong aml and cft in hand so that was about the you know the gray listing and black listing of fatf as we discussed these are the black listed countries so far democratic peoples republic of korea iran and myanmar myanmar is a recent you know addition then comes famous 40 recommendation by fatf which is given in your book if you want to study more about fatf's recommendation you can always log into website of fatf all those 40 recommendations are mentioned quite in detail from examination perspective they may not ask very very in depth question on recommendation but my strong suggestion that you do study it they may or may not test however you should certainly know in aml process so most of the 40 recommendation are related to international cooperation when it comes to aml it talks about the due diligences which are adopted by financial institute it talks about the laws and regulation in the country related to aml cft it also talk about preventive measure beneficial ownership and what and who are the competent authorities who can deal with the matter of money laundering for example in india we have financial intelligence units fiu so fius are the one who gets reporting from financial institute and if they find any case which is suspicious for money laundering they further investigate so similarly fatf talks about who has the power and responsibility 
who are the competent authorities when it comes to money laundering. The 40 recommendation of FATF are very important for us to know. So please do read that in detail. These are, this is a snapshot of how their recommendation look like. So they have different sections for examination perspective. Please read them. Even if you read them broadly, but do read it. Don't skip it. Then comes FATF's mutual evaluation. Few minutes back, we were talking about gray listing and black listing. Then the question arises as to how will they get to know that what is happening in the country? So for that, FATF does mutual evaluation. It is in-depth due diligence of country to check if the country has a strong AML and CFT process in place or not. There are two ways through which evaluation happens. One is technical, second is effective. Technical evaluation includes the evaluation of laws, regulation, policies, and procedure. In order to have a technical evaluation, FATF team will not have a physical presence in that country. So before they plan the trip to that country, the FATF team, they do technical review of the country. They check their laws, regulation, recommendation. Uh, what, how are they trying to combat money laundering in their country? If they have any comment, if FATF team has any comment, they'll go back and give it to the country. So this happened before they physically, you know, appear in that country. But sometime on paper, the laws looks very nice. It is equally important to know, are these laws, regulation are being followed or not? So for that, FATF team does effective evaluation. In simpler term, what is effective evaluation? where they will really see our bank doing due diligence in right manner. Are their SOPs and policies good enough to deal with a, you know, money laundering and terror funding? So that basically effectiveness is to check whether the technical thing is on ground reality or not, or is it just on the paper? In order to check the effectiveness, they don't do it virtually. They come in that country, do that evaluation, and then they give their report in a couple of months. For India, this evaluation happened last in November 2023. Most probably by June, the report will be out. Similarly, it happens to all the countries you know, in a sequence. If you look at FATF's website, it has a section which says that what all countries are due for evaluation. So this is how FATF evaluate the countries. This is a process. If you want to understand in depth what is the evaluation process, this is what evaluation process is. So guys, that was about FATF. Though there are a lot of other things which you should know about it, but for examination perspective, even if you cover these broad points, you're prepared for exam. My suggestion that if you will be preparing the legal side of F, uh, for AML, especially for CAMS exam, there are many, many regulators and many bodies are mentioned. For example, Basel Committee's recommendation, UN FATF, Agron Group, and mostly students find it very confusing and difficult. So one suggestion that prepare this chapter at the last, just before you are planning to appear for exam. Why I'm saying so? Because it's hardcore theory and it has to be remembered. If you will prepare this topic before and then plan the exam after like a month, it's going to be really difficult to retain that knowledge. Even first read should be before the exam, but the last reading should be just before the exam. 
so that it's fresh in the mind. Secondly, some bodies are more frequently tested when FATF is one of them, for sure. So by no you know, chance you are skipping that, for example. So that was my take on this particular topic of FATF. Also, before I say bye to all my audience today, in between, I was getting a lot of queries where people were asking about the study notes, etc. So just for that, we at CAPAGE provides the entire study material for CAMS exam preparation, which includes my video lectures, which includes the chapter-wise notes, as you can see right on your screen. It also includes the chapter-wise practice questions as well as mock examinations. If you want to subscribe for it, you can reach out to us at info at onlineglobalcareer.com or maybe you can just request the details in our YouTube channel. Either ways, my team will touch base with you and support you with that. So with this, I would like to say thank you so much for being with me once again. And I'm sorry once again that I was not able to interact with you, but I'm, I will try my level best to be as interactive and as frequent as I can be with you. So with this, thank you so much. Take care and I wish you all the best for your examination. Thank you. Thank you.